Frank Demore here and welcome to my YouTube channel and I'd like to invite you to go to my prophecy site you see up here at the top BibleProphecyMan.com let me get right in involved with the news here on September the 11th of 2012 and uh, for those of you who just discovered my YouTube channel welcome again but let me let me just say this that when you go into my site by BibleProphecyMan.com, you'll see a link right here, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. This is a documentary. It took me 36 years to put this entire book together, and it's loaded with information about the last days. And, of course, the latest edition of the book is September the 9th, 2012. So let's get right into prophecy first. The word of the Lord tells us in the last days from Zechariah 12:3 that in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, and all that burden themselves with it shall be cut into pieces, though all the people of the earth are gathered together against it. And so the report below is just another example of how the U.S. and Israel are drifting apart as friends. And by the time it is all said and done, the United States will have turned against Israel just as Zechariah 12.3 indicated to us where it says that all the nations are going to be turning against the nation of Israel. So for those of you who are teaching that Israel uh, will always be friends with the United States, I beg to differ with you because the word of the Lord does not say that. It shows us the exact opposite. Now, I'm going to tie in a few things here with Zechariah 12.3 and another scripture here as well. But just to show you that we're definitely in the last days and all these things are coming to pass and we're seeing these events in the news. And uh, I'm going to tie it together. But before I do that, let me go to Joel. Joel chapter 3 verse 2, it says this, And I will also gather all the nations, there you go again, just like Zechariah tells us, all the nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and this is the valley of judgment, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and departed my land. Now also, I don't have this scripture up here, but in Genesis chapter 12, uh, you'll see that there's a curse. Anybody that curses Israel will be cursed, and anybody who blesses Israel will be blessed, which is a good thing. So it's always nice to bless Israel. Uh, but those who don't will be cursed. And I'm going to show you what's going on with the administration, tying in how the United States is moving away from Israel and how the United States has also been cursed. The headline today, the first headline that I'm going to give to you, and of course I'm going to give you just uh, the information here, but you can go to the site as you'll see it right here. Uh, it'll give you all of the information, and I, I recommend that you read that. But this article says this, The Intelligence Committee Chairman, Israel doesn't believe Obama, and neither do the Iranians. It says, A senior member of Congress says that Israel has lost patience with the administration of the U.S. President Barack Obama. And the House Intelligence Committee Chairman, Republican Michael Rogers, said Israel has gone increasingly frustrated with the administration, particularly its policies of restraint towards a nuclear Iran. And of course, if you've been watching any of the news, you know that Israel's been threatening that they're going to strike Iran and uh, to try to eliminate their nuclear quest that Ahmadinejad, the president of Iran, has said over and over again that he wants to use and destroy the nation of Israel. And of course, what he is saying there is Obviously, if you know Psalm 83, Psalm 83 says that in the last days, they're going to be calling for the destruction of Israel. So her name isn't even mentioned anymore. So let's go down a little bit more. It says, Rogers, a Michigan Republican, said Washington has refused to provide Israel with what is termed red lines that would result in a U.S. attack on Iran's purported nuclear weapons program. Right now, the Israelis don't believe that the administration is serious when they say all options are on the table. And more importantly, neither do the Iranians, Roger said. That's why the program is progressing. Of course, I've been warning for the last five years that the United States, the UN, they will do nothing to stop this quest for a, uh, a nuclear weapon 
that the Iranians are trying to get a hold of. And of course they're doing exactly what I warned because I know where the outcome is because all you have to do is read Psalm 83 and Ezekiel chapter 38 you know the outcome there and uh, you'll know that there's there these people are destined because of what the Lord has already shown us for the future that they're going to try to take Israel out we know that God is not going to let that happen. So I'm going to there's a video that I want to play this video for you. Uh, listen to what uh, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is saying because what we are seeing are, I believe, are the format or the road leading to the next Middle East war. Where did you get the news? In your living room, on a street corner, on the screen. Sorry about that. Doorstep. Hey, where do we get the news? You got to hear it's the Bible Prophecy Man. The last Chronicles of Planet Earth. Interface. The world tells Israel, wait, there's still time. And I say, wait for what? Wait until when? Those in the international community who refuse to put red lines before Iran don't have a moral right to place a red light before Islam. So far we can say with uh, certainty that uh, uh, diplomacy and sanctions uh, haven't worked. They've hurt the, uh, the sanctions have hurt the Iranian economy, but they haven't stopped the Iranian nuclear program. That's a fact. And the fact is that every day that passes, Iran gets closer and closer to nuclear bombs. Now, if Iran knows that there is no red line, if Iran knows that there is no deadline, what will it do? Exactly what it's doing. It's continuing without any interference towards obtaining nuclear weapons capability and from there, nuclear bombs. So you, there you have it. I've been warning about this. The direction is going exactly how I warned it because I'm basing what I know from Scripture. And so when I said back then that the UN wasn't going to do anything except talk about it and the United States was going to do nothing but talk about it, that's exactly what they've done. And now they're talking about talking more. And obviously why they're talking more, doing nothing, and there isn't any red line like Benjamin Netanyahu is stating here. And the red line is some course of action. That's what he's talking about. There has to be a date set uh, where you tell them if it's not done, we are going to act. And this is what he's talking about. But So it looks like and it sh certainly appears that Benjamin Netanyahu is going to have to do something knowing that he's going to have to do it alone. Now, in according to Zechariah 12.3, where we know that uh, Israel will be all alone, could you imagine what's going to happen if Israel does attack Iran and they just do it arbitrarily because nobody else is going to do it? Well, obviously, world opinion is going to shift onto Israel and it's just going to help to make the... Uh, the prophecy in Zechariah uh, 12, 3 to come to fruition. Now let's go into the other part that I'm going to draw together where Paul talked about what about these last days events? When are we going to see destruction about uh, the things that are going to be taking place with Israel in the last days? Well, Thessalonians 5, 3 and 4 says, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day overtake you as a thief. Well, we know as a woman who's in labor, we know that the pains get a lot worse as the closer the, the mother comes to delivering the baby. And this is exactly how we're seeing the world events uh, come out or being uh, completed. And so let's just take the peace talks, for example. We know that the, the peace talks were going, they were going steady, and then all of a sudden, about two years ago, they stopped. And the reason why they stopped was primarily because of land, of the, uh, the Syrians wanted the West Bank, the, the Palestinians wanted 
the Gaza. They wanted also to become an independent Palestinian state, which means they were going to divide up Israel, which of course ends up into being, you get cursed when you do this. And then the Palestinians wanted East Jerusalem to be the capital of, obviously, the new Palestinian state, which again, uh, you burden yourselves over Jerusalem, as Zechariah 12, 3 says, and you're in deep trouble. But we're seeing the talks. Now they're talking about doing peace again. So let's go right to that, because it says in this article, the quartet meets in Cairo on Syria. And, you know, it's... When they're talking peace and safety, you know, a lot of people just think, well, they're just talking about Israel, but I believe that it's more encompassed that, but Israel is also involved in what's going to happen, obviously, with Syria, because Syria is mentioned in the Psalm 83 prophecy as coming against Israel. So when you're talking about peace and safety and you have these same nations mentioned, that's when you pay attention. And that's why I'm bringing up this article called Quartet Meets in Cairo, Syria. And this came out yesterday. The foreign ministry delegates from Egypt, Turkey, and Saudi Arabia. Now, I just need to point out that Egypt and uh, Saudi Arabia are also nations mentioned in the Psalm 83 war that will be coming up. It says, Saudi Arabia and Iran conveyed in Cairo Monday to search out a way to end the Syrian crisis, an official said. The Egyptian Foreign Ministry Deputy Spokesman Nez, uh, Nejar told that the, uh, that the meeting took place in the diplomatic club. Now the Egyptian President Hamad Marsi proposed the quartet meeting in an effort to find a way to end nearly 18 months of bloodshed that has racked Syria as rebels seek to oust President Bashar al-Assad who has resorted to a full count military press against him, resulting in the deaths of thousands of his own people. And of course, if you know Matthew 24, chapter 24, where the Lord told us that the nations or the kingdoms would be coming against the kingdom, and obviously we see that uh, almost every day in the news now when the Syrians are fighting against themselves. So here we have, they're calling for peace and safety, and we know that Bashar al-Assad, as they keep pressing him, we know that he's already stated, and I mentioned this before in my, many of my videos, that if they did come against him or he was going to lose his uh, power, that he would attack Israel. And we know where that would lead to, obviously, to Psalm 83, where Syria is involved in that war. Now let's go to Fox News, uh, talking about Barack Obama, because obviously I want to tie in of the Zechariah 12.3 prophecy. It says, President Obama's proclaimed marking of September 11th terrorist attack did not include any mention of God. Oh boy, this is a shocker to me. It says, the president also failed, and by the way, it isn't a shock to me. I was only kidding about that. The president also failed to note how Americans sought solace in their religion in the aftermath of Al-Qaeda's attacks. But, at, but as we mark the anniversary of September 11th, remember that what remains the same, our character as a nation, our faith in one another, and our legacy as a country strengthened by service and selflessness, the president wrote. Instead of the president called on Americans to participate in community service and honor who those were lost. Now, he has left out God altogether. And a man who claims, listen to this, a man who claims to be a Christian, he's come out in a news saying that he is a Christian, a man who was claiming to be a Christian, I haven't heard him mention Jesus Christ once. And if he's mentioned Jesus Christ once, it's about covering up his symbols or covering up like he did in Georgetown, the altar, so there's, you can't see anything about Jesus Christ. This, this is shows you the fruits that he is uh, that are falling from his tree so to speak that they're bad fruits and obviously if he's going against what God writes about and warns about for example trying to split up Israel trying to give back East Jerusalem back to the Palestinians not mentioning anything of God what does it tell you about the man's character in relation to how God perceives him in religion. Now, yes, Barack Obama, without a doubt, 
has a religion. But obviously by his actions, based on what we know from the learning of the, from the Bible and what Jesus tells us about how you can look with your eyes and see what's in somebody's heart. And what I mean by that is that when you look and you see somebody say something, that he is a Christian, but then dishonors the word of God, you can see by your, by your, by your eyes that he is really telling you a fib there, or he's, he's lying. And uh, so you, you really have to understand where I'm coming from. Everything that I'm saying, I'm bringing biblically. And I'm saying, if you see somebody that says, for example, that he is on fire for the Lord, and then he goes robs a bank the next day, I mean, obviously the guy was lying, right? You know, many people say things just uh, to appease people, but in their heart, God knows. And the scripture says only God knows what's in the mind and the hearts of men. Now, yes, we can see fruits, and we know that they're bad fruits, but only the Lord Jesus Christ knows what's in the mind, what that person's really thinking about, and uh, what's in the heart. That's the most important part, what's in the heart. And so what's in, what's in your heart, when it comes out of your mouth, if it's different from the Word of God, you'll know that where it's really coming from. And obviously what Barack Obama's doing, uh, and when you have a, such a solid occasion as the, the uh, 2011 attack, well, you know, if you can't mention God, if you can't mention Jesus Christ once in, in, in a major, major event that took place back then, there's something definitely wrong. And, of course, the United States going against Israel and not, you know, going away from God, then we see that uh, the United States is definitely in the mix of the uh, Zechariah 12 and Joel chapter 3 where there's definitely a, a curse that's been placed on this nation and it, the only way that we can get rid of it is to get somebody who is a God-fearing man who wants to go biblically back to what was written in the Bible not any other book in the Bible I don't care what other book it's the Bible right and one of the reasons why I put this information together from in the, the book that I wrote, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth, is to show you th how uh, that the Bible is the only book that is able to tell us all these things in the future, sometimes thousands of years, and very, very specific prophecies, thousands of years before they happen, and to show you that you can trust what God is showing you. And there's no other book is able to do that. So for you people who are new now, Psalm 83 is, is a war that hasn't been fought yet, but that war is definitely coming. And we know that because Psalm 83 tells us exactly who's coming, and uh, you'll see number 1 through 10 there, it, the Old Testament names, and on the right-hand side as you see at the cursor there, uh, those are the modern-day names. Now what I'm going to do is point out to you number 8. You'll see number 8 right here. It's right there in the photo. I blew it up for you. The Philistine are the people, the modern day Hamas in the Gaza Strip. So when you see news that talks about Hamas in the Gaza Strip, well, the red flag should go up and that should cause you to pay attention. Now, again, if you don't know anything about the Psalm 83, I put up the first five verses there because the first five verses really tell us what's going to happen. It tells us that these nations will come together. They are going to come with a crafty uh, council. In other words, they're going to come up with this evil plan. And obviously, it says that they're going to try to take out Israel. That You'll see it highlighted here that the name of Israel may no more be in remembrance. So the reason why I highlighted the Palestinians here, the Old Testament Phoenicians, because I want to show you what's happening in relation, again, pulling it all together, what's happening with Egypt, who was also mentioned in prophecy. You'll see that in number four right there. So let's see what the news says. It says, less than a year ago, after closing the headquarters in Damascus, and keep, keep in mind, 
Uh, Isaiah 17.1 tells us Damascus is going to be completely left in ruinous heap. So we know that in the near future, there's going to be a major, major uh, war that will take out Damascus. And we see that the events going now in the Middle East are the forerunner of, will fulfill those prophecies. And so less than a year ago, after closing the headquarters in Damascus, Hamas, which is another nation mentioned in the Psalm 83, Hamas outside leadership has found a new home in Egypt capital in Cairo. Wow, this doesn't come as a surprise. It shouldn't come to as a surprise if you know Psalm 83 because those are the identical nations from Psalm 83. So, they found a new home in Cairo. The Hamas leaders are split between Gaza, where they took the violent control in 2007 of the West Bank, and where they seek to gain control, control excuse me, and elsewhere in the region. Now, the London-based daily, the Al Hayat, reported Tuesday that Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood administration has agreed to open Hamas office in the eastern Cairo and establish a joint committee with Hamas to discuss issues of security along the Gaza-Egypt border. And uh, the Hamas Gaza Prime Minister Ishmael Henel will meet with the counterpart Hisham Kandil in Egypt on Tuesday, the, the Daily said. So Bottom line is this, you have Cairo, you have Egypt, you have the Hamas, the Gaza, of course the Palestinians are in the Gaza, you have the identical people from Psalm 83 and what they're doing, coming together, coming, you know, being concerned about their borders, being concerned about the same uh, outcome and we know from the, uh, from the sites, from the websites alone, from the Palestinians and from the Muslim Brotherhood, it's the destruction, they call for the destruction of the nation Israel. So again, we see exactly where we're going and we're going pretty quick to the Psalm 83 war. Now here's another one, Hezbollah, again Hezbollah is mentioned in the prophecy as I already spelled out to you. Here's the headline, Hezbollah aiming 60 to 70,000 rockets at Israel. Well, hello, we, if we know that Israel is going to be attacked by the Hezbollah because God showed it to us, then you know that these 60 to 70,000 rockets, when you read news like this, pay attention because God is showing you what's going to happen in the future. And I know I keep repeating myself, but sometimes it just who knows, maybe the 15th or the 16th or the 17th time it'll finally get through and you'll recognize what the Holy Spirit is trying to show you. Now the Hezbollah has between 60 to 70,000 rockets aimed at Israel, the Defense Ministry uh, Diplomatic Security Chief Amos Gilad said Monday in a speaking at the International Institute of Counterterrorism Summit, Gilad said that the Lebanese terrorist organization, let me just stop right there for a second because Lebanon is mentioned in the Psalm 83 prophecy as well. So Lebanese terrorist organization has stockpiled rockets of various types and its arsenal is far more robust than one, the one it had prior to the second Lebanon war. The next war will be aimed against the home front, Gilad warned. So, in other words, they're going to they're gonna go after Israel. They're going to try to pound Israel with all these rockets. And, of course, we do know that God is not allow, uh, will not allow the nation of Israel to be destroyed in the Psalm 83 war. And we already know what the outcome of that is, just like we know what the outcome of the war that will take place after the Psalm 83 war, which will be the Ezekiel War of which five-sixths of the invading army from that war will be killed and Israel will still be standing. And so it says, going on, in Syria there is some good news, Gilad said, the Golan Heights remains the quietest region in the entire Middle East. And of course it's, gonna, it's going to be quiet right now because Bashar al-Assad is so wrapped up and trying to keep his government established that there's not too much act activity going in the Golden Heights at this time. It says, our deterrence capabilities 
are uh, significantly for uh, for the time being and keeping out wearing parties in Syria. Giglad also warned that the Al-Qaeda is starting uh, to rear its head in Syria with a view that the fall of Saddam will allow it to open a new terrorist front, here we go, against Israel. Once again, maybe for the 17th time. The same nations mentioned, they're telling you that they're going to go in after Israel. Count, Just count the days because only God knows when this Psalm 83 war is going to happen, but it will take place. Now, moving on to another prophecy I wanted to share with you. And you'll see that uh, I, this little dot here, this is something that I wrote back in July of 2011 and I wanted to uh, point it out to you. And I said this, and I quote myself, How many times will I have to issue warnings that the food prices will keep rising before you will really begin to take notice? And year, after, year in and year out, I tell you that the food prices will skyrocket and year in and year out, that is exactly what you see in the news. And of course, I have a link down here for you that you could see that. Now, back in May of 2012, uh, I, I put out this photo here. You'll see this pig that is riding on this rocket, and the, I put Revelation 6.6 on here. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted to show you pork is going through the roof. All right? So... Back in May, you know, when I issue warnings like this, now I want to show you something. Now let's go into the future here, and we'll we'll pick out a, an article for you. The headline: Pig farmers quit as feed prices soar. It says the cost of bread is poised to reach this month or to rise. Excuse me, rise this month as bakers try to uh, persuade supermarkets to cover the increase of wheat crop uh, costs. Now, when you look at Revelation 6, 6, what does the Lord tell us? Well, this is where he tells us people are going to be working all day long for a little bit of wheat. Pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. All day long for a little bit of wheat, for one person, one meal for one person each day, right? So if you plan on staying behind the, uh, left behind when the Lord calls the church out, just understand this. You are going to have to be working all day long just for a little bit of wheat for yourself, not for your family, family, just for yourself. So it says that I heard the voice in the middle of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And uh, so I put this up here to show you what was going to happen in the future. And now we see the prices of pork. Uh, they're going to be passing this on because of what? Well, obviously, if you know the prophecies, we know that the weather conditions are going to be playing a major part in how it's going to rise the food prices. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you've got intense sun, if you've got intense heat, and it's withering up the crops and causing almost a dust bowl and drought conditions, what is this going to do to the feed? Well, if you can't feed the cattle, if you can't feed the pigs, the pork, <laughs> all it's going to do is drive the food prices up. It doesn't. You don't have to be a brilliant economic uh, economist to understand this. Now it says the British corpse still being brought in has been stunted by a cold, wet summer, while the while U.S. droughts have sent world prices for the the grain spiraling. So we have in the Great Britain and we have the United States. Now when you do a Google search you'll see that Great Britain and the United States obviously Barack Obama they're both working to divide up Israel and to give uh, the Palestinians East Jerusalem. And so what do you expect in your countries when you find under the curse because you've gone against God. You can't mess with the Lord. So let's go back to the article and see what it says. The traditional British bacon and egg fry-up could become a rare treat as the rising cost of animal feed forces a growing number of farmers to join an international exodus from pig production. You have less pigs, dries the, pr the price through the roof. Just like chicken. Now, three years ago, I could have bought a whole chicken for three dollars, a little over three dollars. I just went to the grocery store a couple days ago. The same chicken is costing me over six dollars. 
I mean, are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Uh, it is definitely going in that direction of Revelation chapter 6, verse 6. Here's another one. Headline, food inflation, food shortages, and food riots are coming. This is what the Lord warned about. They're writing about the same thing that the Lord warned about. So let's go and see what it says. A devastating global food crisis unlike anything we have ever seen in the modern times is coming. Crippling drought and bizarre weather patterns have damaged food production all over the world this summer, and the UN and the World Bank have both issued ominous warnings about the food inflation that is coming. When the Lord put me in this ministry back in 1977, I started to issue warnings. And some of the warnings that I issued, obviously, when you look at the book, you'll see price of food going up, droughts, famines, floods, intense heat, and all of these things are causing, just like they said, the world's weird weather driving up the food prices because a lot of the, the crops are being destroyed. Now to those of us in the Western world, a rise in the price of food can be a major inconvenience, but in the developing world it, world, it can mean the difference between life and death. And of course the Lord told us in the book of Revelation, he shows that that starvation is going to be one of the signs of the last days. Famines, hunger, drought, we see it in Matthew chapter 24, Luke chapter 21, and Mark chapter 13. So what they're writing here is running parallel to what the Lord already told us. And if it takes you somebody other than what the Lord is showing you to believe it, then hopefully uh, this information will cause you to come to the Lord for salvation, knowing that our time is short. Now it says today, there are approximately 2 billion people that are mal malnutrition or malnourished around the globe. And even rumors of food shortages are enough to spark mass chaos in many areas of the planet. Where people fear that they are not going to be able to feed their families, they tend to get very desperate. And I've been warning about this. This is why the recent CNN article declared that 2013 will be the year of the serious global crisis. Now keep in mind, let's go back to what I showed you before. We're kingdom against kingdom. And I believe that in the future, in the near future, you're going to have more nations like happen with the Arab Spring Uprising because they couldn't afford food. And now it's going to start to spread to other countries, and especially as the weird weather keeps going on. Keep Understand this. We were told that La Nina's back and El Nino's back. And so now that these... Uh, weather conditions that either cause a drought or cause massive floodings, this is going to be some bad news for the world as more of the crops are destroyed and more of the other crops are, are setting up for perfect conditions for insects to come out and destroy. And this is something else where the Lord talks about the pestilence. Now I'm going to go down I'll let you read the rest of this once you get to the site. There's more information on there, but I just wanted to give you this information. It talks about what's going on between Russia, UK, and Kazakhstan, and so forth, and the price of food, uh, how it's rising. But these are the warnings that I gave to you a while back, and I've been giving them over the months, just showing you that uh, the Word of God is coming to pass. Here's another one. Catastrophic world food crisis predicted. Now, David Fromm of the American can, can, uh, can, yeah, excuse me, Canadian journalist, editorialist, and political writer makes a shocking prediction in his own column in CNN that 2013 will be the stage of a worldwide catastrophe, a serious global crisis caused by the food shortages, which will send dark clouds gathering over the world economy. Now let's stop here for a second. Why did I repeat this? This is another article, obviously, but I wanted to show you here, it's talking about the world economy. Now there are many scenarios that will bring on the Antichrist. Rapture of the church could do it, major war, economic collapse, but if there's an economic collapse, we know that the world will be calling out for somebody to restore, bring back uh, a calmness throughout the world, and of course the Antichrist could step up in this manner. 
So when we look to the future, just keep in mind all of the signs that the Lord talked about because I believe what's going to happen is they're all converging at the same time and we may have several uh, scenarios coming together that will be able to bring out the Antichrist and I really believe that this world economy people starving and uh, we're seeing a lot of news about uh, about this and people and nations and governments are trying to work uh, on what they can do to feed everybody and this would be a great way for the Antichrist to say yeah I'll take control I'll feed everybody and of course he will not be able to do that now here's another one, Luke 21, 25, and I'm going to center on the sign of the stars because the Lord told us in the last days you'll have signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now somebody emailed me some information about this asteroid that is coming pretty close, and as you can see here at Frank's note, or note from Frank, it says, only God knows if the asteroid in the video below will actually have any effect on the earth. However, since Jesus warned us uh, about the, the signs coming from the stars, we should pay attention to what's happening in the heavens above us. So what I did is I put you uh, in touch with this uh, video here. Just watch the video and we'll see what's going to happen. Now, we do know that there's signs that will be coming. Now, obviously, we know that the majority of those signs will be coming during the tribulation period, which is the seven-year period that God has uh, ordained to finish out a uh, prophecy that he made that he was going to be dealing with the nation of Israel and you'll see this in the book of Daniel but uh, so keep your eyes on what's going on in the heavens above we've been seeing a lot of strange events going on and uh, so take it for what it's worth but I've, I've done the work to give you some information about this new asteroid it's heading towards us now in closing just let me say this that Pastor Joshua uh, Weeksley, he is a uh, one of my uh, pastors that joined with my ministry, the Last Chronicles of Planet Earth Missions, and uh, just recently he was given, as you can see from this photo, uh, one of the headmasters there in Kenya retired, and Pastor Weeksley has taken over 15 churches. And what, the reason why I'm saying this is because he emailed me today and he's asked uh, for prayer. So I put up uh, his photo, one of the photos that he sent me and I'm just asking anybody that loves the Lord if you would join with me in prayer for the pastor that would be a blessing to both the pastor and me. Now I'm asking that if, if the Lord ever speaks to your heart about helping and because we're building churches and we're building we're feeding the kids we're giving them you know trying to uh, give them things that they need uh, shoes whether it be chairs whether it be uh, books Bibles of course Bibles number one priority um, you know I have no budget and I always ask the Lord please I don't know how you're gonna do it Lord but he always makes it possible to, to be able to give people Bibles to give them the books and it's always for free we never charge anybody and one thing is that uh, when I save up my money, I 100%. And if anybody speaks to uh, to to send in whatever they want to send in, and they send it to my partner, which is uh, Timothy Moore, 100% of everything goes to the ministry. They don't keep a penny, zero. Everything goes. And so this is how we're blessed because we want to make sure. Excuse me. We want to make sure that everybody is blessed. And uh, we want to make sure that everybody gets the good news. We want to make sure that everybody has a Bible that would be able to, to be grounded in the Word. So thank you. Now, in closing, let me just say this. Every day at 9 o'clock, uh, except for Sunday, which we'll be doing at 10 o'clock in the morning, we're praying for the country, the United States. And so we're asking that, that God would change the course of where we're directing right now or the road that we're on. And I would just encourage anybody that wants to pray with us. It's a very short time of prayer. It's about five minutes. Very, very specific. We're praying for a new leadership that will bring back biblical principles and bless the nation. Bless, bless, uh, excuse me. Bless the United States. 
so that we who have been blessed can bless other people. So if we have the funds, just release those funds so that you can feed the poor, so that you can buy those Bibles, hand it to them for free, clothe them, to make sure that they have a better quality of life. That's the call of the church, to do the works that Jesus Christ wants us to do, those things that were, uh, will help the world. And, uh, and of course, we always want to pray for peace. Pray for peace. And we know that the, the day of peace will come when the Lord comes. So you're actually praying for the second coming of the Lord. So thanks, everybody. Uh, God bless you all. This is Frank DeMora.